All right, guys, so just another shout out here, just revisiting the clickable parent concepts. I put up a video a few days ago. Um, it had some relatively complex CSS uh, looking for sibling selectors, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and over here in the digital ambition inner circle, uh, Jennifer pointed out my uh, errors in my ways and gave me a virtual clip across the ears. Um, in a nice way, so she was very kind and um, pointed out some better ways of doing this. So I'm always keen to learn new things, and it certainly is a better way of doing it. So I just wanted to quickly look at that. So big shout out to Jennifer. Thanks for your input and really appreciate any feedback that helps us to learn. So here's the example here. And if I roll my mouse over any of these, I get some styling, so the only clickable link in this is this link here, which looks like a button, but it's actually a link. Uh, and as I roll my mouse over anywhere, I get a zooming effect on the image. The body here, opacity decreases, uh, background color changes, the link button, whatever you like to call it, color changes, so it looks like it's all quite normal. Uh, additionally, if I'm outside of it and I press the tab, focus is on the first one, the same effects apply, except for I've got the focus uh, color on that link. Uh, tab again, tab again. So from an accessibility point of view, tabs are working. I'm getting exactly the same effects as when I hover over. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a very nice way of doing it, and it's a very easy way to do it. So... First of all, I'm just going to have a look at the card itself. So I've got three cards. I'm just going to look at one. I'll just collapse these two over here. So just a basic card. I've uh, set my CSS up externally, so I put an X in front of it. It's just easier to manage in a code manager for me. Um, so I've got a card. Um, I've got a block, which is a footer, and I've given that an element, uh, a footer here. Um, I've got a block which is a body and I've given that an element of body and then I've got an image which I haven't bothered to give an element in this case um, and inside my footer I've got a uh, bricks button which is actually a span with a link um, so I've got a link here and on that link I've used this clickable parent, clickable parent class um, and that's pretty much all to it, all this to it, except for one thing, which I'll actually describe shortly. Uh, but that is pretty much the structure. Uh, so in order of things, um, the way this semantically is going to read in HTML is I've got a div here, which has got a link in it, saying I'm a link, uh, it could be book now, whatever, it might have a ARIA label, and it might uh, link off to something. So the screen reader is going to read that it found a link and it's linking to such and such. And there's a label if, if there's a label there. Uh, my body will be the next thing it finds, which it reads. And then my image, which will have an alt tag. So uh, the context would be, I've got a link to something here. Uh, here's some more information about it. And here's an image which relates to that. Uh, visually, we've got the, the opposite way around. So visually, we've got our image sitting at the top, uh, our footer sitting at the bottom, and our body in the middle. So basically, the image and the footer are swapping places uh, visually. Uh, semantically in the HTML, they're around this way in the structure panel here. So I think that's correct. Um, it seems correct to me. And uh, so heading over to quickly look at the code. I'm just going to find my code block. Just there. Go. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what do we got here? So, basically, the only thing for my card, the X card here, that's important for the functionality is this position relative. Uh, and the reason that is important is because we've got a pseudo element on this clickable parent item, uh, which needs to extend to all four corners of the parent. Um, so we need to make that card relative so the absolutely positioned pseudo can go right to the edges of that. So that's the only thing that's important functionally. The rest of it is just the coloring and box shadows, etc. So you can make that whatever you like. Uh, in my body, 
all I've done is uh, added some padding around that uh, in my footer, setting my margin and padding on that. So, you know, we've got some margin up from the top, so it's auto. Uh, so these buttons all line up at the bottom and the padding around the top, sorry, padding around the right, bottom and left. And that's all there is to that. And I've got a transition time on my image so that when you mouse away, the image goes back to, uh, in 0.6 seconds, goes back to uh, 100%. So that's pretty straightforward. Here's the call bit that changed my thinking on this and the way I was doing it. I wasn't aware of this focus within property uh, before, or pseudo selector, I should say. And what that does is that any element, so if I tab, effectively this link has focus. What focus within does is when you put that on the card or anything else in here, uh, focus within um, is true if any element inside of that box or DOM further down has the focus. So in this case, this link has the focus. So focus within for any parent of that is true. Okay, uh, so tab again, it goes to the next one and all the effects apply, the CSS effects apply because this link has focus. So if we look at that, here's the first one. So when we hover over the card, we want our image to transform with a scale of one. Hover and our image transforms with a scale of 1.1. Also, on the card, when there's an element inside it that has focus, then we want to scale the image by 1.1 as well. So if I press tab, I've got focus on this link, which means the image is going to scale by 1.1. So these two rules here uh, give us the ability to either have a focus, sorry, a uh, hover, where the effect applies on the image, the body, uh, etc. Uh, or when it's got focus through tapping to it or clicking on that button. For example, if we click on that, uh, it's got focus and the same rules apply. So that was a bit of a game changer. I wasn't aware of it. I need to start looking at the pseudo, select the pseudo elements and, and fill in the gaps and fill in the holes and stuff that I don't know. Um, and same deal here where it's basically the card focus, sorry, the card hover, or if any element within it has focus, then target the card body and set the opacity to 0.4. So that's the text that you can see here. Um, and that is all that's needed for the applying of CSS when we either focus or hover. Now the clickable parent is the standard stuff we did previously. We've got a clickable parent, which in this case it is this button here, link. So I get confused between buttons and links because in Bricks, a, when you add a button, it's actually a span with a link made to look like a button. And you know, there's all of this conjecture over a button should be a button, a link should be a link, yet we make links look like buttons. So you go figure. Anyway, so on that, we've just added the clickable parent class to that span there, or that button. And what that does is uh, set its position static it makes an absolute position after pseudo element and the inset basically says go to top left bottom and right of zero so it covers the entire box make it a pointer and display a flex and that's you can't see it but there's an invisible four pseudo element uh, on this here which covers the entire box and goes all the way to the edges so that's why the button actually works so I think it's a cleaner way of doing it. I'm liking it. Um, I think it's uh, better than trying to use pseudo, uh, sorry, um, sibling selectors and that sort of stuff. Uh, now, there's one thing I did want to show you. So at the moment, I've got my footer with the clickable button in it um, at the top here. So semantically, what will happen with the uh, implied stacking order is that the body and image will stack on top of the button. Okay, so that's just an implied stacking order. So if I go to the button here 
and go to my I've already taken it off or maybe I already have it and just save that I must have a oh I always do this with bricks I keep forgetting to deselect the class so if we're looking here I've got a Z index of two if I take that off and have a look now mouse is over the button works fine when we get away from the button now my mouse is over this body here uh, now my mouse is over the image so I lose even though it looks like I'm still on that button because of the effect of the CSS, I'm no longer on that button. So clicking here is not going to do anything. Clicking here will. Um, if I went back into my uh, structure and I dragged the footer to the bottom, visually it looks the same because of the ordering we've done. Refresh that now. Now my button works right throughout the entire card okay so it's a question of um, from an accessibility point is that okay uh, or do we want it to find this button before do you want the reader I should say to find the button before we find the body in the image if so I would say put the footer right at the top here so that that's the first thing that the browser finds uh, but then we need to set a Z index on that um, element there just at the ID level here you need to set a Z index, Z index above the other so even a Z index of 1 because the others don't have a Z index will work so if I set the Z index there and then do an F5 my button works throughout the entire card so I think rather than my previous effort where I was putting a Z index on all of the elements that I want to be on top of the overlay um, this makes more sense. There's only one ZX index you set to set, which is actually on the uh, footer or the clickable parent element, and that's only if that's uh, in the DOM for the other elements. If you have it after the other elements, you don't need a Z index. If you put it before the other elements, you need a Z index, otherwise, you lose focus when you're all over the other elements. So, yeah, so. I'm liking this. This is pretty much the way I'm going to do things uh, for clickable uh, cards. Uh, I really appreciate the feedback here from Jennifer. It really put me on the right track here. Um, and um, that's what these forums are all about. It's about uh, going in, having a go, asking questions and learning. And um, this was a, a good one for me. So thank you, Jennifer. And I hope someone else learns something from this.